everybody we're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays and one of the favorite classes amongst our subscribers and viewers on creativebug.com is Leanna Alday's paper folded box class it looks like this these might look familiar to you this is a tried and true class especially during any gift giving season could be for birthdays or for holidays and of course it's getting a lot of views right now because people are packaging up their baked goods or doing little treats and gifts in these. And the biggest question we get on that class is how do you make this a rectangular box? So guess what, I'm gonna show you. That's what we're doing today. Uh, feel free to write in and ask questions or comments. I'm gonna walk you through a very simple origami folded box that gives you a rectangle. If you wanna learn how to do a square, watch Leanna's class on the site and Faith will post a link to that for you. So I'm gonna show you first in just a nice text weight paper. So I've got, um, this happens to be a paper source paper. I really like it because it's colored on both sides. You can of course use like a scrapbooking paper or any kind of paper that you have at home, but this has to be a rectangle for this particular type of box, any rectangular shape. I would um, stay away from something that is a two to one proportion. So like six inches wide, 12 inches long, that creates a very deep lip later on when I, um, I'll show you how that kind of translates when we make the box. But this is just a standard eight and a half by 11. It's not cardstock, it's just a nice text weight paper. And we're gonna start by folding it in half. You don't need a bone folder for this, we're just gonna use our hands. If you had a specific pattern that you wanted, that would need to be face down or on the outside. But that's the nice thing about using a paper that is double-sided in the same color, is that the inside and the outside are gonna look exactly the same. So now we've got that side in quarters. Turn it and now we're gonna fold the short way here. Line up your edges, fold in half, and then fold in half again. All right, so this next step, you need to make sure that you have the short sides, that you're working with the short sides, that you're not working with it hot dog ways you're working with it hamburger ways, so like this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these corners, they're folded, so I've got two layers here, and we're gonna fold it right here to this last crease. So you're gonna have a spot that doesn't have a fold, and that's intentional. And we're gonna do that on all four corners. Take the corner, fold it right to that edge. And that's also helpful when I'm showing you that I'm just using the solid paper because you can really see that line. Okay, should look like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this open flap and we're gonna fold it right up against these triangle corners. So we're making like, it might look like a little boat or a little paper hat or something. And if you are working with a cardstock, this part can get tricky. If the paper is really thick, I'm gonna show you a tip for that when I fold the next one. All right, and that's all of your folding done. Now what you're gonna do is just open and adjust, and you get a box. And you can kind of fold this in to help keep this a little bit more at right angles. But that little paper box is super cute. You can use this for like desk accessories all throughout the year. You can do little versions. This is with origami paper that is also rectangular. So I took off a quarter of it from the original square. And I love the gold that has the craft inside. This paper is a cardstock, so it's nice and rigid and holds little sweet treats like this. And I'm gonna show you how to fold this one. It's the same folds, but working with the heavier paper is a little trickier, so let me just show you. We want the gold to be on the outside, so that goes face down, and we do our process again. So, folding in half. Now you can use like a bone folder here if you want. I'm using a craft stick. Actually, I'm not worried about it at this stage. The folds are the mechanical part. I don't need them to be super crisp because you're not gonna really see them so much at the end because you're gonna be 
looking at what the box holds more than anything else. All right, so like that. Now we do it this way. I'm just rotating it because it's easier for me to fold that way. We're working on the shorter side, so this is where our corners go. You've got a lot of paper here that you're folding, especially when it's coated with this gold metallic foil. So you may have to really just force it into place. Maybe you guys have made this box before. You might have some ideas of what to put in the box. You can let us know. All right, so for this part where we're gonna um, fold down the lip, this can be tricky to get a nice crease. So I just like to take a scrap of paper. I'm gonna line it up, kind of butting up against here, and then I'm using my popsicle stick just to score a line really quickly. It's not even that precise. It's just gonna help me do a cleaner fold. Just so you can see what that looks like. And I can kind of coax it into place If you want, you can use your popsicle stick to help that crease. We'll do it on the other side. And I really like the craft paper with the metallic. It's a nice contrast. Again, just pop up those edges. You can see with the thicker paper, really holds its shape nicely. I like to just kind of do that to, to get it going. You can put whatever treat you want in there. And if you want to make a lid, I tested different proportions. Um, this is paper printed from my surface design class, which is on Creative Book also. I've got a lot of scraps of these lying around, so it's fun to play with existing. You could do calendar pages. You can play with upcycling or recycling some existing um, prints or paintings even. I know like if you're doing a lot of sketches and you're working on drawing paper, this could be a really nice project to see these papers have a new life. And if you look, I'm gonna make Tim show this. I've cut one down so that it is a quarter inch shorter on both sides. So. This will be the inside of my box, and the bigger page is going to be the outer part of my box. Anything more than a quarter inch is just too floppy. It's too loose from the top to the bottom, so a quarter inch is ideal. And we want this to be on the outside, so we're just going to do this one more time. Then we'll make a little set of boxes. I really love working with the paper that I've printed on, so this is all um, jelly plate printed. You can make really beautiful like botanical boxes. They could store like little supplies. Okay, so this is a little bit harder to see because of the printing. So you just kind of got a feel. And I know that's where my corner is. That's where my corner is. You can just kind of put your finger there. Kind of fold down that lip. And if you accidentally do this part on the, sh the long side, like we're always folding the corners in on the short side, if you do it on the long side, it'll match perfectly and there won't be a lip. And the lip is what actually holds the whole box together. So you'll know if you're doing it wrong because you don't get a lip. So there's our base box. Look how pretty that is with the pattern on it. I love it so much. And we'll do our lid. And I always like to start on the longer side so that I always wind up doing the corners with the short side because it's the side I've just folded. So it makes it pretty foolproof. You can't make a mistake if you do it in that order. 
Faith, do we have any questions? People are finding this very soothing. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Watching me fold paper. Apparently, it's very soothing. And I Amy love it. Just got a bone folder. Oh, and someone just got a bone folder. Ava? Amy. Amy. Hi, Amy. Um, a bone folder will change your life. Also, they're just fun to talk about. So straight to the corners. And you could um, scale this to any size. So as long as you're working with a rectangle, you could go bigger, smaller. You could play with different kinds of paper. Get that to stand up. Now I can't remember which one is my top and which is my bottom, so let's see how they fit. Oh, this is my bottom. It's a nice snug fit, which is what you want. And you can put a little ribbon on it like that. Here it is um, in the same paper, just with the polka dots. You could glue this down with a glue stick if you wanted. Um, I like to see the mechanics because it's an origami box. It's cool to see like it all comes together from a single piece of paper. I even tried it. I thought some of you might ask, can you do this with fabric? And I had this uh, scrapbook paper that is burlap on one side and paper on the back. So if you wanted to watch like Jodi Alexander's book cloth making class, which is paper on one side, she shows you how to add paper to fabric. So create a paper backing for fabric. Or if you check out the scrapbook aisle, you can usually find fabric that already has uh, paper backing. Sometimes it's burlap or sometimes it might be some kind of cotton. You need to make sure that you're starting with the rectangle. So if it's 12 by 12, you'll just need to cut off a couple inches on one side. And then you can put it together in the same way, but you will need to hot glue the corners and the lip in order for it all to stay together because the fabric is a little bit like slippery. It doesn't want to kind of capture those corner folds to create your box structure. So this is just a little bit of hot glue. Just super cute. Again, be really cute for um, giving cookies for the holidays. So if you are curious, we do read all of the comments and we do try to respond to the questions that you guys have. Um, and we saw that you were commenting a lot on Leanna's square paper box. And so we thought we'd bring you the rectangular version. Um, I hope you enjoy it for the holidays and we'll see you on our next live shoot.